YouTube, welcome back to the channel. I'm your host TKK and we are back with another video. Guys, today is Monday and what that means on the channel is that we're gonna be talking about arcade content. This is gonna be a time where I like to speak specifically and exclusively and wholeheartedly about my passion for being an arcade cabinet owner. Now, we are three weeks into the new year, so happy new year. And if you're new to the channel, thank you. If you're just breezing by, take the time, check out the content, if you see something you like, go ahead and hit subscribe. This is a regular thing that we're going to be doing. My plan is to do 52 total videos this year around arcade cabinets and, you know, things around arcade. So what we did was week one, I did a complete teardown of my Chulix slash Vulix machine. I actually own a Chulix, not a Vulix, but they're similar. And I modified it. I put a new monitor in it. I added some new speakers, a new amplifier, just fully customized it to make it the way that I want it to be, right? Week two, we followed up with me modernizing it a little bit further because one of the components that I had in week one's video was a stream deck. Well, week two's video actually went more in depth as to what you could do with a stream deck and how you can just turn a computer on and simply control everything without needing a keyboard and mouse because my configuration does have a PC to it. OK, so instead of like staling that content out, I thought this video we talk more about like what it's like to actually own one of these things right because it's a piece of technology that you essentially have to import or you got to have a great relationship with somebody that can get their hands on it as well as i wanted to introduce you guys to my second big blue arcade capcom cabinet yes i have two of those and it's been less than a year since i got my first one and now i have three arcade cabinets so after this intro we're gonna get right to it All right, guys, so hopefully you all doing good. Me personally, man, I'm in great spirits. We've got a lot of different things that I'm planning on doing with the channel this year, but we're gonna get right into what this video is about. So I am now officially a three-time arcade cabinet owner, and it's been great. Now, two of my three investments are complete projects that it's going to require me to do a lot of work on, right? I have two big blue arcade cabinets, and you know those cabinets are they're very interesting to say the least because there's nothing really conventional or traditional about these cabinets at all. They are extremely heavy, extremely wide, extremely tall, and they feature technology that is just extremely dated. So unlike my Chulix, which is a more modernized system, even without me modifying it and doing all the things I did, it's got a traditional amp that you just hit a power switch on, and it's got a monitor that just features like an AC power cord, and it's just got sticks that, you know, I could just pop the panel open and just swap the buttons out. The big blue cabinets, on the other hand, are just really unique. So they feature a harness called JAMA, and apparently from... You know, the way that I've learned that this thing works is like all the video connections and the control connections are all going to be intertwined and, and, and they're going to mingle up and meet up and connect to whatever the control board and the arcade cabinet system that you're going to be using. It's extremely confusing, right? But it's something that I really, really love because I won tournaments on literally all three of the machines that I have. Now, when I say all three, I mean, I've, I've, I've played competitively on the Chulix Vulix style cabinet and i've played historically always played on the more you know big blue us you know jama harness and switch and all of that like i have a lot of experience with those and so you know for me to have two of them is a blessing right but before we get into talking about that let's just talk about like you know some of the the do's and don'ts and the things that you should be looking for if you're you know getting into this type of hobby all right so this is not scripted i'm gonna just give it to you straight off the rip i think like one of the first things that you should be doing is you should do a lot of research now when i say a lot of research you need to do more than just join a facebook group and like some pictures and you know ask a couple of questions like you really really have to deep dive into what it is that you're interested in doing um i think i did a pretty good job with the chulix uh machine i i when i got the chulix machine i already had the monitor that i wanted into it but to be honest with you, I had no idea how I was going to get that monitor into it. And, you know, one of the most uh, frightening things was just like once I seen that I had to invest another two hundred and fifty dollars into a monitor bracket, possibly to get the monitor in it that I wanted. I was just like, man, this thing is going to be a money pit. But 
I was willing to do that because, you know, the Chulix is something that I legitimately play on. Like I've been seeing a lot of people, not a lot, but I've seen quite a few people that have a multitude of these systems and I have nothing against that. Like I'm the wrong person to judge anybody that buys multiple of one thing. But, you know, for me, I knew that I didn't want to have like a house full of these or a garage full of these. I have no no need for that, right? I'm not looking to run an arcade. I'm not looking to run a tournament center. I just knew that I needed one machine that I could modify and I could make my own. So some of the things that I knew that I was gonna want that were just unacceptable immediately was just like the controls and the monitor. I was just like, you know, I'm accustomed to looking at like the literal best panel, panels, TV panels that you can get. And so, you know, I wanted my experience when gaming to be similarly, right? So again, really ties into the whole monitor piece. So number one, you should be thinking, uh, number one to this subcategory of like the Chulix is, you know, you should be really deciding on if you want the Chulix or if you want the Vulix. Now, for me, I think it comes more so down to priorities. You know, if you really care more about being able to make your system, system the ex like the most absolute, you know, modern that you can do it and you want to put the best of the best into it, in my personal opinion, guys, I mean, and I have no problem spending money on what I want, I think the Chulix is the model to go for. And the reason that I say that is because it's financially cheaper. And at the same time, you you shouldn't feel as bad when you're cutting on it. Now, when I say cutting, I'm talking about literally gutting it. And if you guys checked out my video for that, um, that was the beginning of the year, you know, I literally changed a lot of stuff in there. I changed the screen, I changed the speakers, I changed the amp, I got rid of the power supply. Like I, completely gutted in and, and, and just made it a modular system that was going to work to give me the the deliverance of performance that I needed, right? Something super modern. So it's a really, really work of art now for me to be able to sit down and play on it. I can play online and I can enjoy it. I know I'm getting the lowest input latency with the best graphical fidelity. You know, I'm getting some bleeding edge technology. You know, as I said, my monitor has something called HDRI that stands for high dynamic range intelligence. So essentially, if I'm playing different titles, it will change the contrast. So unlike how the monitor was that was in the Chulix, I don't have to go behind the panel, take the back off, tinker around with the settings and and then be really limited. Like I said, I wanted something that was going to be up to date. So you definitely want to research that. And if you think that you're going to want to really modernize it, get yourself a Chulix. Now, on the other side of that, if you are interested more so into, you know, like restoring things or having more so like a collectible, then the Vulix is the way you would definitely go. And I, I intend to get myself a Vulix. I really do. Hopefully when I get one, I'm going to be like looking to check all the boxes for it. And it might even be something that I might take a road trip for. Um, so, you know, with the Vulix, because it's the authentic, like the actual unit, it's something that you, in my opinion, will want to have and keep and know that, hey, this is the original piece and the original format. And this is exactly how it's intended to be. So for me personally, you know, if I get a Vulix, when I get one, I'm going to want everything loaded with it. I'm going to want the, the ashtray and the coin mechanism and everything working. And if I have to, you know, restore those things to make sure that they're fully functional, that's something I'm going to want to do. I'm probably also going to want to, if I can, get a Vulix with a two player panel. If that's such a thing, that's what I'm going to want to do. It's not going to be something that I'm going to want to get to play on, really. Um, but just to kind of like have as a collector's piece, I think that's going to be a dope um, piece to my collection. Um, so yeah, that's, those are two things that I would definitely tell you guys, for those of you that have been watching like my Chulix content and interested, you know, understand the differences and, and segregate them based on what your expectations are. All right. So some of the things that, you know, you should look out for though, no matter what you're buying, especially with like a Chulix is, uh, you know, if you're a person like me, you know, I'm really big into like cleanliness. Uh, my garage is about like, as messy as my life will be and even with it i'm like literally giving away computer cases and all different types of things as i featured in prior videos you know you know i'm just getting rid of stuff so that i can make a clean nice space uh the biggest thing for me is like you know you kind of have to have a relationship with whomever the owner is enough for you to be able to comfortably have a conversation um so when you negotiate a price on something like this if you're if you're factoring in shipping costs and with the product ways or whatever the case may be, you know, I would encourage you to factor in some type of cleaning cost. That's that's one thing that I would have I would have done. You know, I would have I would have um, I would have negotiated. Hey, look, you know what? I want this, but I want it to be clean. Now, in my solution, I got mine from a good friend like 
I damn near want to say one of my best friends because it's somebody that I can I can talk to about personal stuff and we got a good relationship and we have since I relocated from where I'm originally from in the United States to where I'm at now. Um, but that set aside, you know, to me, um, what you should be looking for is to get yourself a clean unit that is functioning. And when I say functioning, I mean top to bottom, right? Um, photographs just aren't good enough when you're just seeing them on social media. You need to have the conversation with somebody and speak on a platform in which you know you can get you can get photos that are not going to be compressed and you can get a multitude of photos that you know that are going to lead you to ex seeing exactly what you're getting from the unit all right and yeah so as i was speaking on the last thing you know with like cleanliness of the unit you know inspecting what you you know expect is 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 big especially when you know you're dealing with a product that is really sought after to be honest with you it's not like you can go to your corner store and buy a Chulix or a Vulix, but at the same time, there's a wide community of people that seem to always, you know, be ready to buy into this. Now, whatever their financial situations could be, I have no idea. But, you know, when I look into the groups, the many groups that I've, I've ventured off to, um, I'm a part of a couple of groups on Facebook. But beyond that, you know, I've seen, you know, Reddit posts and things like that. And it just seems like people are always willing to, you know, hit someone with the are you willing to sell type of deal. So. You know, like I said, inspect what you expect. So if you know you want something that's clean and you know that you know you can work on, and you got to get photos so that you can be prepared to go into that, right? Uh, likewise, with my big blue machines, you know those machines, they're a different type of beast altogether. And so, with that being said, uh, they require a different level of of mechanical know-how, basically, because the technology is not modern at all. And you don't really have many people that, you know, work on those things. Right. So I'm kind of in a situation where I bought two units that not only I need to deep clean, but I need to I need to actually gain knowledge. Like I have to have education in order for me to personally be able to work on them the same way. The Chulix, I was able to just tear that down myself, unscrew, unbolt. And again, because I just threw a new monitor and a new PC. All I really needed was from the Chulix to just have the frame for me. And that's pretty much what you buy into it for. Those of you that will buy into it for the control board and the monitor, it's just a different circumstance than what I'm in, a different situation altogether because me, I gutted mine. But with the big blue, you can't do that. You can't really just throw a new monitor in there, right? Um, and so, you know, I, when I look at things, especially things that are like electronic, I want like clean cable management. I want, you know, uniformity. I want stuff to look good and to sound good and to be the best, right? So I'm kind of in a similar boat where I want to just completely take it apart. But there's only so much you can do when you're taking it apart. Like you can paint big blue, you know, you can, you can, I can scrape the rust off of the, you know, the, the grills. I mean, these are all different things that I've noticed that I know that I want to do with these cabinets. But at the, at the heart of it, it's just like, it's still puts me in this fish out of water feeling that I have where it's just like, man, this is just, it's very overwhelming. And so at times I felt like, I have felt like, man, I really bit off more than I can chew with owning these, but at the end of the day, I could afford to get them. And if nothing else, like they make me happy just knowing that I own them. What I don't want to do is I don't want to become a person that just hoards machines. Like I don't personally need to have like 30 different machines if i ever get to that point where i do then cool it just is what it is but my plans for these projects are just really to modernize them by way of you know new paint new woodwork and by woodwork we're talking about doing whatever i need to do to solidify the wood to get me nice clean edges to get new t molding to get fresh paint on it um to get the proper marquees in the ways that i want them to be uh, one of these units, I do want to run like a PC in it. So I want to do an open bench build in for it. And one unit, I want to get the Naomi running. I do have the Naomi. You can check that content out. Um, and so, you know, I plan on trying to get these put in place where, you know, they can be something for me to marvel at and something for me to legitimately just like sit in my garage and be able to just play on for hours and just have fun, have a good time. So there's going to be a ton of content coming. Uh, you know, we're, we're in week three of the year. And so I thank you guys, you know, the rest of the year is going to be a multitude of different things. It's going to be, you know, more work on the Chulix. It's going to be, 
at some point, hopefully, me looking for the Vulex and just kind of taking you through that. It's going to be me working on those big blues. Those things need a lot of work and I'm really determined and dedicated. What I have to do first is I have to get them out of the dining room that they're in because I've got new TVs and stuff that I need to get mounted up in there. And I got to get them out in the garage. Once I get them in the garage, then I can open the garage and I can start doing testing myself and start doing different type of work and such like that. So it's going to be a whole process, man. Hopefully you guys are here for it. Like I said, if you, you know, stop by, um, thanks a lot. Leave a like if, you know, this is your kind of content. Leave a leave a comment if, you know, you got something to say, something to add. If there's something you might want me to talk about in future videos um, in regards to arcade stuff, let me know. This is not the type of video for like everybody, right? But this there's just a select group of people that will understand this passion that i have for these things and so i'm gonna catch you guys on the next video peace god bless and as i always say max love